What's up everyone, JST Sense here, and what a cr crazy week it's been. Uh, regard anytime there's a new launch, right, there's always drama and stuff. But the latest drama has been the multi-core enhancement that appears to be on by default on various motherboards. I did a video about that. Please check that out before moving forward with this one because this is a direct, this video exists because I had to do that, which means now I have to do this. Because the other thing that was brought up was, well, Jay, if the 8700K was unfairly running at 4.7 gigahertz, which is not the out of the box experience intended by Intel, but yet one that the motherboard manufacturers have basically artificially applied, then doesn't that mean your Ryzen versus 8700K test is flawed as well? And yes, you're absolutely right. Do you wanna be cooler? Do you wanna be more desirable? Well, you're in luck because right now you can own your very own Jay's Two Cent swag and immediately be the cool kid on the block. Max out your sex appeal by following the link down below. So after I did the MCE video, of course I got an email from ASUS that was like, whoa, 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 Jay, I just watched this video. Something's not right because in your video, and they showed a little screenshot, they're like, you show that sync all cores is enabled and that's not on by default. And uh, I'm running the latest retail BIOS, by the way, guys. I, I've updated the BIOS with the latest retail when we did the initial test video and uh, they were perplexed because I went, no, 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 no. Optimized uh, defaults goes MCE to auto and sync all cores by default. So what you see here right now is the way I'm gonna do my test, but watch this. If I hit F5, load optimized defaults, and we're gonna go ahead and you just, you can see it just did it right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and restart so that we can reload the BIOS and I'm gonna show you that it's on by default, which ASUS was sort of challenging me. And uh, yeah, this is the kind of stuff that's happening here when a company doesn't even know what the defaults are internally. And some people would, uh, I don't know. So whatever, if we go over here to the advanced mode, AI tweaker, and we look right here, multi-core enhancement is set to auto and Core ratio, sync all cores. That's the default. And that's where the fault was. Because what ended up happening right there is it set all the cores to 4.7 gigahertz when the 8700K is supposed to run 4.3 gigahertz under load on the six core CPU. That was a 400 megahertz overclock out of the box, which definitely skewed our numbers versus Ryzen. Now the overclock numbers are what they are. That was a manual. I don't expect that to change. Some people questioned about me using the air cooler, uh, the Noctua cooler here on the Ryzen system. And to that I said, temperatures were not a problem. Some people wanted me to verify that we were indeed running 2933 megahertz, which I will do. But with all the talking out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and redo the test. Now you understand the ideology of why I have to redo the test. And uh, we'll see how much different things actually are. Transition. All right, so I just spent the better part of the day benchmarking all over again. Um, good results, actually. And you know what? I know I said I wasn't gonna benchmark the overclocks again, but I decided to go ahead and just do it again because I didn't want to leave any room for uh, undue scrutiny, if you will, because there's, I mean, might as well have the due diligence since I messed up the first time. It's actually a good thing though that I revisited the overclocks because I recalled a few of you pointing out in the original video that when the board was cycling after I applied the overclock and I was going, oh, this thing's cycling, it's being weird. Uh, when I booted, I made sure that it was actually running at the 3.9 in the last test, but I didn't verify the memory. Because once I saw that the 3.9 was applied, I just assumed that the bio settings I put in there had applied. And some of you guys were like, no, 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 no. You need to go back and check it because Ryzen's weird with memory and sometimes it will revert the memory speed but leave the core speed. And I'm used to uh, I'm used to BIOS where basically if anything fails then it reverts everything, not just a part of it. And that's exactly what happened. So kudos to you that pointed that out. Uh, we did do the benchmarks again with this running at 2933 and 3.9 gigahertz and the results definitely improved. The whole point of retesting these CPUs though was to check for redundancy and accuracy and obviously uh, things have changed. Now, although the 1700X at its base settings, even 2133 megahertz, it really stomped the 8700K. And the reason for that is Cinebench R15 pretty much scales perfectly with cores. And that's one of the reasons why like 3D Mark is something that scales perfectly with SLI practically. Um, yeah, so on the surface, if, if Cinebench was the only test we did, it would look like uh, the Ryzen system is the clear winner across the board, but that's not really the case, right? In Handbrake, the Intel system was a few seconds faster. Again, not really noticeable differences. I mean, a minute 32 versus a minute 35. Uh, Blender, 
526 versus 513. The Ryzen system actually won in Blender. Time Spy, we got a 7700 even on the Ryzen system and a 7746 on the Intel system. Again, differences you would never notice. But when it comes to Rise of the Tomb Raider though, there was a significant difference in FPS, like 30 FPS difference, right? We got 165 FPS with the 1080 Ti. Oh yeah, if you guys noticed, I had Titan X's on here earlier. I put the 1080s back on because that was the test we did originally. Um, but anyway, regardless, we had 165 FPS with Tomb Raider and 135 FPS with the Ryzen system. And if you notice the numbers are different than the first test, that's because I actually added SMAA in this test where I had FXAA on before because I wanted to try and put a little bit more load on the GPU and see if those numbers came closer together, but it really didn't. So yeah, although SMAA is not nearly as demanding as like SSA or super sampling. I just wanted to see what would happen with that one setting. The difference here is how they compare to each other, not how they compare to the previous tests. So that's important there. And then Premiere, no, no surprise there. The Intel system just dominated the Ryzen system and that's simply because core clock is king when it comes to Premiere. So we had seven minutes, 47 seconds to render a 4K, two minute 4K video on the Intel system and nine minutes and 15 seconds on the Ryzen system. Now, once you overclock the systems, everything just kind of scoots along, right? And it's, everything comes down, but it, the, again, the intervals kind of stayed the same. The Ryzen revolt results came up significantly though, because the Infinity Fabric definitely benefits from memory speed because that's how it communicates. So we saw a much better improvement on the Ryzen system, but of course the Intel was still beating it. But you know what? I'm not here to tell you which which you should buy. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to just give you some of the information and try and make it as accurate as possible. I failed in that last video. It's, I know it's starting to look like I do the failed videos on purpose just so I can come back and do another video about it. I promise that's not the case. I don't wanna do the work two times, three times, four times. Uh, I just want to be honest with you guys and that's the whole reason why I do it. But I will tell you what I think is a better bargain. I still think the 1700X is a better bargain, which I said in that previous video, but now seeing how much the uh, Intel came down actually, with the 4.3 versus the 4.7, then it's definitely a bargain with the 1700X. Although once you overclock the 8700K, which you should be doing because it's a K skew, it's the whole reason why it's there, then uh, you definitely do get your money's worth, but it's a hot CPU, so you need to make sure you have adequate cooling. Remember, the Ryzen system achieved all of this comparative with a water-cooled 8700K and an air-cooled 1700X. You can get this CPU with this cooler for the same price of only the CPU, and we're running a hundred and what, $30 cooler there, $120 cooler, whatever it is. So there, the results kind of speak for themselves. There was one other test I was gonna do though, but I decided it's a stupid test and it's a waste of time and I'm not gonna do it. And that is, I always get these comments saying, Jay, what you should really do is, is underclock the Intel so that you can see how it's really comparing to the Ryzen system. And it's like, you know what, why would I do that? No one is gonna go into their Intel system and undervolt it or underclock it. No one's gonna do it, especially 8700K. I think for science purposes, it'd be neat. But then what do I do? Do I, do I then go into the Ryzen system and disable two cores? I'm, I'm maybe, I guess, I don't know. So yeah, I mean, it's eight cores versus six cores. It is what it is. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go. I apologize for the inaccurate results in the previous video. Moving forward, you're not gonna see this test mess, messed up again because, right, fool me once, Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Fool me three times. I quit. All right, guys, I'm going to go. Thanks.